Hey, thanks for tuning in to Ascending Lotus. We're going to be talking today about uh, some of the craze and hype that's been going on uh, behind the scenes and um, in the uh, world pertaining to precious metals. Um, I'm doing this video to kind of bring a little bit of awareness to it. I know a lot of people have been uh, steering toward the cryptocurrency. Um, some people have been making gains in the stock market. Uh, although recently, I think people are coming to the realization that the stock market is being played with. Uh, there's a lot of manipulation and, um, and, and rigging going on, uh, which can potentially make it unfair for those who are not uh, in the in crowd per se, uh, or the, you know, super affluent. And so, you know, um, some people may become victimized in the stock market or taken advantage of uh, just because, you know, they do not have the the skills, the the, the computer speed or the, the insider trading information or the ability to shut down the markets um, because you're taking a loss, right? So there's a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, uh, rule changing and rule bending happening from the other side that affects the small investor. Now, one of the things that's interesting that we see that's happening now is there's a shift going on from the paper world into dealing with precious metals, uh, sp specifically silver right now, because that's a little bit more affordable than going after gold. Um, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about some of the things that um, we know about silver and just the history of money. All right. Um, I've shared that in a, in a video before, but I want to kind of touch on that again so we can kind of see some of the uh, the truths that's being revealed around us pertaining to um, money and uh, are the people being robbed. Uh, that's really what it boils down to. All right. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some um, some different things that's been going on behind the scenes or things that, you know, that's happened that we may not have, you know, paid attention to that could actually uh, give more information and context uh, pertaining to uh, those who are really for the people and those who are really against the people. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to start with a quote by uh Thomas Jefferson. Give me just a moment so we can do that. Okay, so the quotes right here. Um, and if you want to, you can just type in quotes by Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson was really, really adamant about um, making sure that the banks uh, that were implemented in America were banks by the people and for the people um, and didn't have outside control or wasn't operating as a as a separate entity in, in corporation. Um, and so what we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to kind of look at the, the, the banking and and see what uh, Thomas Jefferson had to say. So he says, if the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around the banks will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent that their, for, uh, that their fathers conquered. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. All right, so like I said, um, there's a lot of quotes by Thomas Jefferson, a lot of quotes by Adams. Um, you know, when they were going against the bankers, even uh, Abe Lincoln had uh, quotes, um, and they, they, they realized that banking um, has to be done with a, a certain sense of morality. And if it's not carried out with a certain sense of morality and principles behind it, um, bankers become swindlers or become banksters and they create uh, syndicates or they, they create a, another like, uh, um, uh, process for which they can extract finances from the people. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of look at that. All right. And here's, here's another one. Um, he says, I sincerely believe that banking establishments are more dangerous than standing armies and that the principle of spending money to be paid by posterity and poster, uh, posterity is your descendants under the name of funding is but swindling futurity on a large scale. So in essence, he's saying like it's more dangerous to have bankers in a standing army, right? The bankers can be very dangerous, and when we're thinking about getting funding now, um, we're in essence 
putting our children and our, our, our descendants into debt in the name of funding, all right? Now, why do I bring that up right now? Well, um, a lot of people have been, you know, pressed and hurt due to the, uh, due to the um, you know, due to the um, illness going around, we'll say it that way. And we've, you know, and, and, and rightfully so, you know, people have needed aid and assistance. And so what, uh, what the government has done is um, they've issued out stimulus right stimulus packages now in that they've taken care of businesses to make sure that businesses can pay their employees they've given a small portion to the everyday uh citizens um like i said that was a very small portion however the trillions of dollars that they printed and i say for instance in 2020 well that money has to be paid back all right and now some of it may be paid back by you know us the people um however a large portion of the debt still will fall on our children and our children's children, right? Because we're talking about trillions of dollars being paid back, all right, or having to be paid back, plus interest, okay? And these are the things that they're not kind of, they don't really talk about it in the sense of, hey, you guys want to go into more debt? You guys want, um, you know, you want us to shackle your, your great-grandchildren? Because that's what we're going to do when we print this money. They're just getting in and wanting to print money. Um, and so I kind of understand why Trump was a little apprehensive of wanting to shut down the nation. I understand why he was a little bit apprehensive about wanting to, uh, to pass uh, specific uh, stimulus packages because uh, it, it, it comes with a, it comes with a, a caveat, right? We're, we're in essence putting our, our posterity into debt before they're even born. So they're born with shackles. Okay. Now, if you don't believe that, let's take a quick look at um, usdebtclock.org. And uh, I encourage you all to um, to come in and, and take a look at these, uh, these numbers and these statistics here. Um, <clears throat> now, what you'll see here looking at it is the U.S. national debt. Okay, this is the overall debt. We're sitting around $27 trillion in debt. And as you see, this number is just constantly moving. All right. And so that puts it at around $84,000 of debt per citizen. 220000 is the debt per taxpayer. All right, the green is where money is coming in. So this, if, if, if everybody who thought that, you know, when you get a refund check, that's the greatest thing ever. Um, I kind of want you to look at this and really understand that you're being taxed because um, that money has to go back to pay this down. So the green is trying to offset these counting and calculating red numbers. Okay, so this is the U.S. federal tax revenue, right? This is how much they're collecting. Total state revenue, so they're trying to collect from the state level, the federal level, all right? And the aim is to be able to pay back all of the stimulus packages that they've done over the years, all of the borrow and deficit spending, that's what they'll call it. They'll say it like that, deficit spending, right? Pretty much all the borrowing. <clears throat> now the question is, <clears throat> excuse me, well, who, who are they in debt to, right? That has to be the question everybody asks, well, if we're doing deficit spending, do we owe ourselves? That has to be the question. Who is, who is being owed and who is tacking on interest to make sure that we pay the loan plus the interest back. See, these are things that we have to start really looking at, asking those type of questions. Because if you do that, then you'll kind of begin to see, um, you know, uh, you, you'll see the matrix for what it is. You'll start to really unravel the fact that um, what Thomas Jefferson was speaking of has happened. And this is not a good thing, okay? So if the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, First by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around the banks will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent that their fathers conquered. Okay, so we're dealing with private banks. Now, the main private bank is the Federal Reserve. Okay, now <clears throat> I started this out by talking, or bringing up the fact that we're going to be talking about metals and why precious metals are so important. Okay. Um, and so to kind of do that, so you guys can get a quick glimpse before I show you um, the money looks like, let's take a look at our Constitution. Uh, here we go. All right. Now, if you guys have a pocket Constitution or anything like that at home, or 
Um, you can get on Google and Google the United States of America Constitution, right? This is this this document is the outline for how government is supposed to operate. And when they get outside of the Constitution, it gets a little dangerous and it gets a little bit um, of risky for the people to be, you know, um, and, and pretty much puts the people at a disadvantage to where they can be taken advantage of. All right, so we're going to take a look at Article 1, Section 10. So clause one, it says, no state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation, grant letters of marquee and reprisal. That's pretty much like a uh, issue out. The state can't uh, by itself go to war. Um, coin money, emit bills of credit, make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. Pass any bill of attainder, ex post facto law, or law, impairing the obligation of contracts or grants any title of nobility all right so they put a lot of restrictions right there in uh, article 1 section 10 pertaining to uh, what the states can do and what it couldn't do all right now one of the main things that was stated here is that they can't make anything but gold and silver coin a tender and payment of debt now i want you to think okay um is your money backed by gold or is it backed by silver? Is it backed by anything right now? All right. Now, if you don't know the answer to that, I'm going to tell you that it's not, right? We're operating on what is called a fiat currency. Now, it used to be backed by gold. It used to be backed by silver. All right. That was a long time ago, um, 1933. Um, and then it slowly, uh, around 1964, at the Bretton Woods, um, there were there were certain... Um, certain was it nixon there were certain time periods where they slowly started to debase it where they where they were uh pretty much on a, a fraction of gold. So they went from being fully backed by gold and i'll show you what that means in just a second to to where they were then uh, a portion of it connected to gold and then they went fully off of it okay um and once fully off of it it's 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 fair game now it's fiat all right <clears throat> um and that you know, just knowing that kind of had me asking certain questions when, when certain things were being said. One of the first things that kind of um, triggered a question for me uh, when, when they were talking about the coin shortages that I found kind of strange was, all right, they mentioned there's a coin shortage. Now, when we're talking about coin shortages, I want you guys to really hear me out on this. If we're talking about a coin shortage. What caused the coin shortage? All right. The coins that we have in circulation right now do not or are not made of any kind of precious metal, right? More than likely is nickel mixed with copper. Okay. Now, in my mind, if there's a coin shortage, the coin shortage is associated to the fact that they can't get access to the metal or that there's a limited supply of the metal. Now, they want us to believe that is because they had to shut down their printing press for making the coins. However, we still had essential workers working and currency should be considered or deemed to be essential. All right, without currency, without the flow of currency, then you can't have proper transactions. Without proper transactions, you have a decline and halting of the economy. All right, so to me, that would be most essential. All right, so let's rule that out. OK, um, now let's take a look at the fact that, you know, one, it's made out of nickel and copper. If there was a shortage of that, wouldn't those prices have gone up? Right now, I can tell you, copper is still only a few cents. Right. I mean, that's that's very, very, very cheap still. OK, so there wasn't a shortage on copper. Um, and so when you start to look at it from that lens, you start to really question, like, hold on a second. I don't even really think that there was a coin shortage. I think that, you know, these are just certain things that they're doing um, for whatever agenda that they have uh, in mind that they're wanting to do. Maybe it's the goal that they want to be able to get into a, um, a fully, um, a full internet based transaction system to be able to make sure that every, every cent is being accounted for in transactions. Okay. Um, and so, like I said, as, as we look through these things, we're going to start to notice certain anomalies. And I just want to bring these, um, bring these things to people's attention. All right, so I'm going to go back to finish sharing uh, the screen real quick. 
All right. And so we just talked about Article 1, Section 10. Nothing but gold and silver should be made um, a tender uh, in payment of debts. All right. And currently right now, it's not. So let's take a look at what the money really looks like right now. So, ah, okay. So right now, right now we have our Federal Reserve note. And we've got our good old George Washington on this. And if you notice, it'll say Federal Reserve note at the top. <clears throat> and it says, uh, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Okay. Now, this is our current currency. All right. It's legal tender for all debts, public and private. It's issued out. It's been signed by the uh, Secretary of Treasury. Excuse me. All right. And it's linked to one of the... Uh, Federal Reserve Banks. All right, this one is issued out of, it looks like New York. Okay, fair enough. Now, one of the things that we have to really pay attention to on this is the fact that it says that it is a note, okay? And I'm gonna show you the other one and it does not have the word note on it. Now, um, pertaining to money, a note is what we'll call an IOU, all right? It's a promise to pay something back. That's why you have things like promissory notes. Okay, it's an IOU. Okay, so we're really issuing out and utilizing debt instruments and we're calling it money. All right, but in actuality, it's, it's a fiat currency, not backed by anything. It's really an IOU. Okay, now let's take a look at what money used to look like. Um, and now this, remember, this is still a, a form of paper. Okay, so this one is a little bit different though. Okay, well, let's take a look at it. this was series uh, from 1928. Now, if we look at the top here, we see that this is a silver certificate, meaning that this was linked to silver. Okay, meaning that somewhere in the treasury, they had this tied to a specific piece of uh, silver that should have been in the treasury. All right, and if you look down at the bottom, it says one silver dollar payable to the bearer on demand. Again, the coins that you're using when you go and you shop have no bit of silver in it. It may look like silver, but when I tell you, if you actually hold the actual piece of silver in your hand, you're gonna notice a huge difference, all right? It's a lot shinier, a lot heavier, all right? Um, and it, it, the feel is, and, and the sound that it makes also is just a big difference, okay? Um, so do not think that the coins that you're using, your, your quarters, nickels, dimes, those have 0% silver in it, okay? That's nickel and that is um, copper. It's not even worth the face value amount that um, that is supposed to be, you know, traded for, okay? <clears throat> now, with that in mind, I want you to think of that. They're making money or currency and giving it denominations that it's not even valued at, okay? And then the people have to pay back the amount that the value that they say it is. So let's say, for instance, it costs them, you know, maybe uh, uh, $10,000 to print out $10 million that they loan with interest. You have to pay back the $10 million plus the interest, but they only spent $10,000 to print all of that. And now they're making all of that money back plus interest. And if it's not paid back, then what are they coming after? Right now, you tell me if that's fair, and you tell me if that's really for the people. Okay, that's what Thomas Jefferson was hinting at when he said what he said pertaining to private banks. Now, I want you to notice something on this on this um, on this certificate here because we can't call this a note. This is a certificate. Do you see anywhere on here Federal Reserve note or Federal Reserve? Nope. It has the Treasury though. All right, the Treasurer. His signature, Secretary of the Treasury, right? But no Federal Reserve. These are some things to think about and really start paying attention to, right? The Federal Reserve is a private bank, private institution. And it is loaning money to the government or loan, loaning uh, currency to be put in their circulation, but we have to pay that back. And on top of that, anytime they print a new stimulus, we lose purchasing power. Now, Let's take a look at that. And what does that mean when we say we're losing purchasing power? Now, I want to read this. This is HR 5404, right? It's coming from congress.gov. 
You guys can take a look at it when you get a chance. Uh, <clears throat> and here's what it's pertaining to. So 115 Congress, 2D session. All right, it says to define the dollar as a fixed weight of gold. In the House of Representatives, and this was uh, put in March 22nd, 2018, Mr. Mooney of West Virginia introduced the following bill, which was referred to the Committee on Financial Services. All right, a bill to define the dollar as a fixed weight of gold, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America and Congress assembled. Section one, findings. Congress finds the following. The United States dollar has lost 30% of its purchasing power since 2000 and 96% of its purchasing power since the end of the gold standard in 1913. Under the Federal Reserve's 2% inflation objective, the dollar loses half of its purchasing power every generation or 35 years. American families need long-term price stability to meet their household spending needs, save money, and plan for retirement. The Federal Reserve policy for long-term inflation has made American manufacturing uncompetitive, raising the cost of United States manufactured goods by more than 40% since 2000, compared to less than 20% in Germany and France. Between 2000 and 2010, United States manufacturing employment shrunk by one third after holding steady for 30 years at nearly 20 million jobs. The American economy needs a stable dollar, fixed exchange rates, and money supply controlled by the market, not the government. Seven, the gold standard puts control of the money supply with the market instead of the Federal Reserve. Ah, now this is really interesting that this was proposed in March 2018, that's still during Trump's presidency, all right? And this right here is letting the people know with this bill, they're wanting to take the power out of the hands of the Federal Reserve and put it back into the hands of the market. That's the people, okay? The gold standard means legal tender defined by and convertible into a certain quantity of gold, all right? Under the gold standard through 1913, the United States economy grew at an annual average of 4%, one third larger than the growth rate since then and twice the level since 2000. All right, so when we were on the gold standard, even though we weren't operating necessarily um, from you know, extreme credit and deficit spending, we still were on the incline and we were still um, building an economy at an average of 4%. All right. So those who believe that we need a credit based uh, economy or, or, or a currency or financials is, is not necessarily, um, uh, you know, adequate. It, it can be done with uh, a, a gold backed money and currency. All right. There's a there's proof and it's been recorded. OK, um, the International Gold Exchange Standard from 1914 to 1971 did not provide for United States dollar convertible into gold and therefore helped cause the Great Depression and stagflation. All right. So they're equating the fact that gold, um, not the dollar not being convertible to gold anymore is what caused the Great Depression. All right. Now, if we go back to 1933, that's exactly when um, they actually uh, stopped the people from being able to have ownership of their gold. They had to actually turn it in. It was confiscated. Now, how could the government confiscate gold when the Constitution, and you guys read it, specified that the only lawful way to pay a debt or anything that should be made a tender and payment of debt was gold and silver? Nothing else. But the people made a run on the banks. They tried to get their gold. Um, it was a penalty, a $10,000 uh, $10, fine, or even jail, uh, jail time if you were caught having gold or metals, okay? Now, when, once that was turned in, as a result, they gave you Federal Reserve notes. So they took the money and gave you or gave the people back then funny money, monopoly money, right? And um, with that, this brings about where we are now, right? And technically with the Great Depression, um, the United States was, was on, the, on the verge of going bankrupt. And I believe that is why the Federal Reserve took that opportunity to begin trying to lend currency to the United States corporation as, as a form of a bailout due to the fact that the Great Depression kind of hammered the nation. All right. Now, I'm not going to get into speculation and all kinds of things about what really brought the Great Depression about. Um, but there was a lot of different um, things going on in that time period pertaining to banking. 
I think that what needs to happen is there needs to be a thorough assessment uh, into banking practices that went back, you know, that were going on back then, the stock market, to see if there were manipulations happening back then the same way that we just seen manipulations happening uh, a week ago, okay? Um, and if so, you know, then were these other major banks uh, participating in that as well? All right, and if so, I mean, they, there should be, you know, uh, some type of a penalty uh, because many people lost their lives during the Great Depression, right? You have people committing suicide, you have people losing, you know, wealth that, uh, that they may not have ever gotten back or still working to get back, you know, on top of that, you know, in, in debt now. So I think that's something that, you know, would be nice if people really looked into. Uh, let's continue with this. Uh, the Federal Reserve uh, trickle-down policy of expanding the money supply with no demand for it has enriched the owners of financial assets but endangered the jobs, wages, and savings of blue collar workers. I'm gonna read that again. The Federal Reserve's trickle down policy of expanding the money supply with no demand for it has enriched the owners of financial assets, but endangered the jobs, wages, and savings of blue collar workers. There's your wealth transfer that's, that's constantly happening. Every time they do a stimulus package, right? The blue collar workers, the lower class is not really getting or seeing any of that. But it's going to the corporations and, and i.e. the corporation owners, right, and shareholders of those corporations. It's not going to the average average Joe, right? The blue collar workers. All right. And and as a result, too, is endangering jobs, right? We're already dealing with high employment. All right. 12. Restoring American middle class pros, uh, prosperity requires change in monetary policy authorized to Congress in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 5 of the Constitution. So there they go. They bring them back up. Article 1 of the Constitution, right? Stating what Congress can, can do to fix these things. All right, Section 2. Define the dollar in terms of gold. Effective 30 months after the date of enactment of this act, the Secretary of the Treasury, and this act referred to as the Secretary, shall define the dollar in terms of a fixed weight of gold based on that day's closing market price of gold. And Federal Reserve Bank shall make Federal Reserve notes exchangeable with gold at the statutory gold definition of the dollar. All right, so this is gonna be interesting to see, you know, this has been introduced. Now, it hasn't moved any further, all right? And from what I've seen, these things can sit and then at, a, at the right time, they'll, they'll bring it out and then it's in play and then boom, it's enacted, okay? So if that is the case, then we could see you know, potentially um, the Federal Reserve being forced to have to accept uh, their Federal Reserve notes to be in exchange for gold, right? Um, and that, that would be, that would be really interesting to see that day happen um, where you can, you know, go to a bank and exchange your Federal Reserve notes right there at the bank for actual money, all right? Um, but I don't, I, like I said, I have no clue how they're going to try to bring that about, uh, but what I'm trying to show is that there's something going on behind the scenes that, you know, that you may not have been aware of pertaining to precious metals and the fact that precious metals are very, very, very important. Um, a lot of people are holding paper assets, thinking that everything is just going to be perfectly fine with those paper assets going into the future, and it may not. Also, you got a lot of people going into the crypto realm, and still you don't hold those assets and everything is monitored and tracked and is not regulated in any any way and so you know that's that's a that's a risk too because what happens if you don't have access to internet what happens if uh you know um you're dealing with hackers right if we see that they can manipulate these markets who's to say that they can't get into the crypto realm and manipulate those and there is no regulation or rules that keep them from, you know, um, fluctuating prices in there, right? And in and, and essence, robbing people in the crypto realm, okay? So the safest way to be able to preserve your wealth and value is holding actual money, which is gold and silver, all right? Now, I want to I wanna show something. Um, now, when I came across this, I thought it was kind of interesting, and I kind of want to get you guys' feedback and see what you guys think. Um, was JFK onto something? Let's take a look at an executive order that JFK had actually put out. Now, as, uh, this was Executive Order 11110, and this was Amendment of Executive Order Number 
10289 as amended relating to the performance of certain functions affecting the Department of the Treasury. Now, this was issued June 4th, 1963. It says, by virtue of th authority vested in me by Section 301 of Title Three of the United States Code, it is ordered as follows. Section 1, Executive Number 10289 of September 19th, 1951, as amended, is hereby further amended. A, by adding at the end of paragraph one thereof, the following subparagraph J. The authority vested in the president by paragraph B of section 43 of the act of May 12, 1933, this takes us back to the trading with the enemy and the collection and confiscation of gold, as amended to issue silver certificates against any silver bullion, silver or standard silver dollars in the treasury, not then held for redemption, of any outstanding silver certificates to prescribe the denominations of such silver certificates and to coin standard silver dollars and subsidiary silver currency for their redemption. And by revoking subparagraphs B and C of paragraph two thereof. All right, so let's break this down right here. So JFK kind of undermined the Federal Reserve with his executive order and was stating that they, the treasury was to, and he gave the executive order to the treasury any silver that you have in holding within the treasury, you're going to issue out a certificate um, attached to every ounce of silver that is in there. Okay, so he was getting ready to flood the market with silver certificates so that the people could have the choice on which currency they wanted. <clears throat> now, I do believe that if that actually happened, those who were in the know more so probably would have went toward those silver certificates held those or, um, you know, wanted to exchange those for actual silver, all right? Or at least they have known, like, wow, I've uh, been able to see that there's a president that is actually going after the Fed. Um, and I think that that was really ballsy of him. Um, and, and it just showed, you know, to the type of character and man that he was to not be afraid to go against the beast, all right? Um, as we, we know, uh, unfortunately, what ended up happening to him uh, not too long after this executive order, all right? And <clears throat> those uh, silver certificates never touched the streets for the most part. Um, and so here's a here's an article that I came across and I thought this was uh, really good. Um, and so it says, JFK killed after trying to shut down Rothschild's US Federal Reserve in 1963. With the stroke of a pen, President Kennedy declared that the privately owned Rothschild Federal Reserve Bank would soon be out of business. But that's not what happened. On June 4th, 1963, and that's the, what we just read, the executive order, a virtually unknown presidential decree, Executive Order 1110, was signed with authority to basically strip the Rothschild Bank of its power to loan money to the United States federal government at interest. With the stroke of a pen, President Kennedy declared that the privately owned Rothschild Federal Reserve Bank would soon be out of business. The Christian Law Fellowship has exhaustively researched this matter through the Federal Register and Library of Congress. We can now safely conclude that this executive order has never been repealed, amended, or superseded by any subsequent executive order. In simple terms, it's still valid. When President JFK or John Fitzgerald Kennedy signed this order, it returned to the United States federal government, specifically the Treasury Department, the constitutional power to create and issue currency or money without going through the privately owned Rothschild Federal Reserve Bank. All right. So for those who are not aware, one of the, 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 the things that is going on right now is um, the people are beginning to realize the truth about the market manipulation, the, uh, the intentional suppression of the precious metals prices um, through underhanded manipulation by large entities in the Federal Reserve and you have the Reddit community and uh, other, you know, small time average investors beginning to almost stand up to the bully. And they're going after silver now to try to uh, really preserve their wealth. All right. And the question I'm asking all of you that are watching this is, what are you doing? Are you looking to preserve your wealth? Uh, I'm not telling everybody just drop all your cash and go into silver or go into gold. 
But what I am asking is that, hey, educate yourself on these things, really look into it, um, do some digging into history, um, and don't just accept the history that's been told to you, because some of the things that have been told to us have been a little um, skewed and a little uh, on the lines of just propaganda so that we don't know the truth, okay? Um, and, and when you really come to think of it, most of us have never been paid real money. Right. We've been paid for, you know, working and doing our jobs, but a lot of us have only gotten paid in Federal Reserve notes, which are just IOUs. All right. And so from all of that, what are our gold and silver holdings? All right. Um, and that'll be up to you to determine, you know, if you have financial advisors, you can speak with them. Um, this is for informational purposes only. I'm not a uh, licensed attorney or anything like that. What I am is just a researcher and I'm just trying to bring information to you all uh, about what's going on. Um, the silver markets have been jumping. Uh, one thing that I, I, I want to uh, also throw into this is if you are going to get into uh, precious metals, be very, very careful um, pertaining to investing in SLV or GLD, which are the ticker symbols on the stock uh, exchanges. And, and the reason I say that is because those are based on contract. All right. And so when you're investing in silver in the stock market, you're really not going to be holding any physical silver or gold. And on top of that, um, the way they've been doing it, and this is where the fraud is, is that there's about almost 200 to 250, maybe even sometimes 300 contracts to one ounce of silver or one ounce of gold. OK, and, and, and with that, that is... Uh, a recipe for disaster if silver does begin to go too high because they'll put a ceiling or a cap on the amount of gains a person can get, okay? Now, if you're holding the physical, that puts you in a better position because now you actually have um, where the value is, okay? And the value is attached to the physical, okay? And that's only if we're talking about investing, you know, um, in the stock market. Um, like I said, that's a paper contract. And it's, 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 it's really, um, it can be risky at a time when silver is going to make a rally or a breakout. So just keep that in mind. Um, make sure you stay tuned or look out for um, the next video, uh, because what I'm going to do is for those who are interested in obtaining gold or silver, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through processes and, and where um, you can actually get gold if you want to get it online. Um, I will also uh, briefly touch on if you wanted to get it from uh, a gold uh, or silver bullion dealer. Um, just giving you kind of the ins and outs and tips pertaining to um, what to look for, how to, how, to, uh, how to price it out, and know what you're looking for. All right. Um, and with that being said, uh, I thank you guys for your time. I hope you found this information, um, you know, uh, informative. Uh, like it, share, subscribe. Um, make sure that if you are a new subscriber, click the, uh, the bell icon so that um, you get notified when we do upload new videos um, and so that other people can see this video as well um, and, and so we can get the word out about what's really going on with our, uh, with our economy and the direction that we, we want it to go. Uh, you all have a great day. Peace.